All right, hi Year 12s, this is uh, Mr. Lim again, and we've finished the Redox uh, series, but we're going to do some bonus exam questions um, to go through them just to let you see the level of questions that you're going to get. Okay, so let's have a look. This is from the Waste 2017. Um, what I'm going to show you is that this is the video that you can need to watch if you don't feel that you are confident with this one, the average score, so you know how difficult it was, and any notes from the examiners um, just to let you uh, know where everyone else screwed up and so that you don't make the same mistakes. Okay, so copper reacts with nitric acid is shown in the redox equation below, which of the following uh, states the change in oxidation number. So it's just working out the oxidation number of here. Okay, so we have the NO31 minus. Okay, so remember with the oxidation number rules, uh, it's a polyatomic ion. So therefore the sum of all its parts must equal to its charge. So you've got the oxygen parts and the nitrogen part. The oxygen is negative two, so three of them makes negative six. And so therefore, to make that a possible, that must be positive five, okay? And so therefore, since there's only one of them, it's positive five over here. So we know that this one or this one is correct. So let's go look at the next side, NO2, all right? So we know that if this is a neutral molecule, so therefore it's going to, the sum of the oxidation numbers is going to equal zero. We know that oxygen is negative two again, so therefore that's negative four because there's two of them. What equal, what plus negative four makes uh, zero is positive four, since there's only one of them, so that's positive four, is that's the nitrogen, and therefore that's correct, and so therefore B is the answer. Okay, that's why 90% of the kids got it, so make sure that you can work out oxidation number, you remember all the rules. Okay, galvanic cells and electrolytic cells, two videos you have to watch to, if you don't feel confident about this one. A lot of people got this right. Um, a lot of kids thought that electrolytic cells uh, contained a salt bridge, but they do not. Okay, which makes it quite easy to work out because it's the only one without um, number one is C, but let's just go through it. Um, external circuit, yes, that's in both of them. Um, transfer of electrons, yes, that's in both of them. Two different reactions with distinct reduction potentials. Now have a think about it. If I was to say that, oh, okay, if I electroplate something, it's only got one equation. Well, no, it doesn't. It has two equations. It has the oxidation and the reduction equations um, or reactions both occurring. So they do have two different uh, reactions, even though they are the same reaction, just going in opposite directions. That still counts as two distinct reactions, and they have uh, different reduction potentials. Okay, so that's that one there. All right. Let's move. Uh, Undesirable electrochemical process is corrosion of metals, which of the following equations does not represent what might occur during corrosion. Now, this was done poorly, okay? So let's have a think. You needed to know a little bit about uh, corrosion. Knowledge of corrosion was not required to correctly answer this, as there was only one choice of equation, which was not a redox reaction. So you could have just picked out the one that wasn't a redox reaction. Okay, whilst a lot of the kids answered this thing correctly, a lot of the kids chose alternative D, which was the lead, okay, implying that uh, you only think that iron corrodes, but all metals can corrode, okay? So corrosion is just the oxidation of metals. Um, B was the other option, but then that was most commonly picked, but remember that you have to have the oxygen turn into hydroxide ions for rusting to occur. Um, that's the thing that's actually taking your electrons, okay? So which one was it? It was C, all right? Because that's the only one that doesn't have a, a redox reaction occur, okay? Um, uh, again, from Waste 2017, no notes on this one, but a lot of kids got it right. It's just identifying um, things on the standard reduction potential table. Okay, so all of the others are uphill except for one of them, which happens to be A, all right? But just a couple of hints, make sure that you know what you're looking for when you do this, okay? So what you've got to do is you've got to recognize that, okay, well, this substance here, and that substance here are the two things that we're looking to be uphill or downhill, okay? So if you look them on the standard reduction potential tables, um, the O2, actually O2 rocks up, uh, appears quite a few times, but you've got to pick the right O2. What is the O2 turning into? It's turning into water. So which one are you going to pick? You're going to pick the one at 1.23. All right, so you're picking the one at 1.23 not the one at 0 0.70, not the one at 0 0.40. Okay, you've got to pick the, you've got to look at the reactants and the products, pick out, okay, what is it turning into? Oxygen turning into water, it's at positive 1.23, all right? So just 
identifying which of the reactions that are actually going to occur. All right. And so gold is not um, that reaction is not going to occur. OK, so it's uh, a that's the only one that's uphill downhill. OK, just a word of warning when looking at water and oxygen, make sure you're picking out the right half equation. OK, so let's have a look here. A limited amount of sodium metal was added to a beaker of distilled water containing a few drops of phenolphthalein. Now maybe you're thinking phenolphthalein, I'm immediately thinking it's acids base. And maybe you've remembered that acid plus metal, um, or metal plus uh, uh, acid makes hydrogen gas, and maybe that's what you're thinking about. But really this is a redox reaction, because you're looking at sodium as a metal, which is a very strong um, reducing agent, Right, reacting with water. So you're looking at sodium at negative 2.71 on the standard reduction potential table. And then you're also looking at water at negative 8.83. Uh, right, right down at the bottom. So those two are in the downhill um, arrangement. So make sure that you can find the appropriate uh, reactions and say, yes, okay, this will actually occur and it's a redox reaction. So Three changes that would observe. Well, I like to actually just make sure that I know what's going on. So sodium, oops, sodium turns into sodium plus, plus an electron, and then the water turns into H2 plus 2OH minus. Okay, and I need uh, two electrons on the other side, two electrons on this side. Okay, so that's the reaction. Um, what we will be looking for is, okay, well, what are you going to observe? So you're going to observe this sodium disappear. So the Na dissolves or the gray solid dissolves. Okay, um, probably best to write gray solid dissolves. That's the first thing, because why? It's a limited amount of sodium metal. So it's only a small amount. The Na fully dissolves. That's what you expect, right? A colorless odorless gas is produced. That's the H2. Colorless odorless gas produced and you can't abbreviate in the waste exam so don't do that all right but a colorless odorless gas is produced and then um third thing well we're going to be producing some base okay and that's what the phenolphthalein is for so you've got to kind of have a remember what color phenolphthalein is in the various substances phenolphthalein is um clear and colorless in neutral and acidic conditions and it's pink in basic conditions so um, what you're going to see is a clear colorless solution turned to pink solution that's what you're going to see those are the three observations that you will see write the ionic equation for any reaction involving both sodium and water include all the state symbols and it says here um, only a third was able to write the ionic equation with the appropriate state symbols correctly okay so let's go put this uh, let's go show them that we are going to be part of this awesome third. Okay, so sodium solid plus, now remember this is a redox reaction, so I need to have two of those, so I have two of those, um, plus water in the liquid form goes to, right, sodium ions, AQ, plus H2 gas, plus 2OH minus AQ. Now I'm sure that I'm missing out some balancing. That's there, right? So how come you just don't write it like this? NaOH AQ and two of them, right? Well, you could write it that like that and then not get that mark for the ionic equation because you have to show them as their ions. Now, why do you have to show them as ions? Because they're not spectator ions, right? They actually did partake in the reaction. The sodium turned from solid to aqueous, so therefore it's automatically added. The water turned into hydroxide ions, so that's automatically added as well. So you can't just get rid of them expecting that they're spectator ions because they're not, All right? And you don't want that either. Okay, so that's what you would write for that one there. Okay, next one. Um, a thick strip of lead metal was immersed in a small beaker containing a solution of one molar iron three nitrate. Okay, a couple of things to read first. Iron three nitrate, so that's Fe3 plus. Okay, so you look for Fe3 plus in the um, standard reduction potential table, you will only find it in one place, right? And that's at uh, going to Fe2 plus, plus an E minus here at uh, 0.77 volts. Okay, there is an Fe2 plus, which goes to Fe solid, but we don't care about that one because that's not what we have here. 
Okay, so make sure you're reading what type of ion you've got. So you're going to make some iron two. Iron two, that's one of the things you're going to make. And you see here, only gives one of the two of the products. Any is the important word there, so you're going to do all of the uh, given products. Right, and it's put inside a, uh, or a piece of lead metal is put inside it. So the iron and the lead will be in a downhill orientation, the iron three at least it is, right? And so that's going to form Pb2 plus plus 2e minus. Okay, so what's the other thing that's going to be produced? It's the Pb2 plus or the lead ions, okay, or lead nitrate. So those are the two things that are produced. Um, list all observations for it. Okay, so it's a thick strip of lead metal which means that it's ideally in excess because there's a lot of it. Okay, so um, the lead, oh, no, you're just going to call it a gray metal electrode. Gray metal reduces in size but does not fully dissolve. Okay, that's the first observation, right? You'd expect three of them because there's three things there, right? Um, Describing clearly the substances before and on completion of the reaction. So you can even have to write out what's happened beforehand. So what's happened beforehand? It was a gray metal placed in a what solution? Placed in a brown, pale brown solution. That's the iron three. The gray metal reduced in size and the solution turns pale green. Why does it turn pale green? That's the presence of the iron two plus. Okay, so that forms, that disappears, that changes, that lowers as well, and you can't see, you can't see this lead two. Okay, so those are the three observations that you would expect there. Right, and then lastly, again, very poor average. Okay, 37%. Many challenged it, found this question very challenging. Uh, many seemed unsure about how to deal with the sulfur and the oxidation and the half equation and the chlorine and the reduction half equation. Candidates who attempted to do this question using changes to oxidation number found it even more difficult. All right, some candidates considered the carbon and the nitrogen and the cyanide rather than separately as a cyanide unit. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you kind of need to just generally know uh, that the S, the CN is a uh, one minus unit. All right. But we don't have to work out much until we actually have to um, put some stuff down. So as rough working for this, because it asks you for the oxidation and the half reduction half equation, and you're not maybe sure which one's which. Uh, so what you want to do is just do it in a bit of um, in the margin or something, so we can just uh, work out the correct one later on. So you have the SCN. That's the first thing, right? And you know that it turns into the SO4 because that's where the sulfur is going, right? But what else is going in there? It's also going to be the HCN, okay? So just like um, in any of the, um, so pretty much we just put all these chemicals in here because they all exist and so therefore you, these are the things that you need to balance out the equations other than the hydrogens and the oxygens. So you look at this one and you say, okay, well, this is not balanced. We need some oxygens on the left hand side because that's next remember the non uh, oxygen and hydrogen elements are already balanced so let's go add some waters in here okay now that we've added some waters in here we can add some hydrogens how many seven why because i've already got a hydrogen here okay and then balance out the charges it'd be six e minus okay and that the fact that the uh, e minus is on that side, which means it's losing electrons, which means it's the oxidation. So that one would go there. Okay. Then now we know what the reduction is. Okay. So that's the IO3 minus, and that's turning into the ICL. And this is where it would have tripped up a lot of kids because, you know, they're like, oh my God, what's the oxidation number of this? And it's like, it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, because you've got two halogens there and you're like, well, I can't actually work this out because this is a molecule. It's not even an ion or anything. Which one's which? We can actually work that out later if you want to, but you wouldn't need to do this for this uh, half equation. Okay, uh, you will need the Cl minus on the other side. Why? Because otherwise you can't balance out all the non uh, hydrogen and oxygen elements. So now you have the uh, all the non hydrogen and oxygen elements balanced. 
let's start balancing everything else. Let's go add some waters here. Let's go add some hydrogens here. And then let's go add some electrons here. Okay, so that's all that one there. All right, um, and then you need to combine them. So again, we're looking at the lowest common multiple of four and six, which happens to be 12. And then as you combine them, it's this, okay? 2SCN, and I suggest you do this on your own before you look at the final answer so that you can just practice it, uh, make sure that you know what you're doing. Uh, why is this pen going everywhere? Uh, plus 3CL minus goes to uh, 2SO4 to minus plus 2HCN plus 3ICL plus H2O. And uh, you've noticed that I've cancelled out all of the hydrogens and uh, waters already. You may have needed a bit more space to do that, but um, you've got to do that eventually. Okay, so this is the level, right? They're a little bit harder, but you've got to be able to get through it and it's not too bad. All right, so if you have any questions, please come and ask and then we'll see how you go. That's it.